Hello, and welcome to Talking Two Ways. I am your co-host, Tyler, and with me is my co-host, Al. Hey, the translation is in Seneca. In English, it is, hello, I am thankful you are well. My name is Alec. Talking Two Ways is a project that Al and I started to make a place for us to discuss Native American cultures, histories, and current events, uh, as well as to give a voice to a population that deserves and needs it. Personally, it is a place for me, a white guy approaching 30, to ask questions and listen to as many Native American perspectives as possible. As a talkative guy, I am going to try to focus on that so that I am not the colonizer in the room. Al, how about you? I want to do this project because I have grown up in a Seneca home, uh, in a half half white home. My mother is Seneca, and my father is white, so I've grown up in both worlds, really not knowing about either. So I'd like to know more about my, my deeper heritage and share it with everyone else as I learn. I think it's a, a great personal topic for you and me, because Al's father is my godfather, so I've always been over at his house and saw the reservation growing up, and it was kind of just a place that was a accepted part of my life. So now that I'm an adult, it's nice to explore the things that I didn't really understand about it and get a deeper understanding of of, of what it means to to live with a different another people like that and what they go the, what they went through. I, I hope to understand it myself because I've mostly grown up in my father's world with uh, tidbits of my mother, but now that I'm uh, on my own and <laughs> be able to learn it myself without say, like a parent overshadowing or not so much controlling what I learn, but keeping an eye on what I learn and what I say. Now I can pick it for myself. There's a power on that. I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're exploring it together. So I, I hope you enjoy our, our journey with this and uh, join us for the ride. Welcome to Talking Two Ways. Welcome. Yes. How are you doing, man? How are you feeling? Good. Today was a good day. That's good to hear. Today was the first day of actual live classes. Ooh, nice. So, uh, that went pretty well. Yeah, you said you only have, like, a couple of those that are actually, like, live classes this this semester? Yeah, yeah they're all packed into a Thursday. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, honestly, it, the best part of my college scheduling experience was being able to have all my classes on, like, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or the Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Like, if I had a Tuesday, Thursday of mostly nothing to do, that was, like, the best thing I could get so much done. Isn't it? I'm finding time to find some, uh, put some exercise in there. Hey, I hear that, man. I've been trying to get that in ever, ever since first the, the, the surgery, the, the minor surgery I had, and then the foot injury from trying to keep up with children thinking I could do so. <laughs> I, like, uh, I haven't been able to go on a run. I've been, like, itching to, like, do stuff. So I've been trying to um, do just more, even just, like, just lifting weights in, in the living room while I'm, you know, between stuff I'm doing at work. Uh, and also I've been doing more Tai Chi Tai Chi. Yeah. What, what is that? Is that a specific martial art? I I, I I always get sometimes get the different ways of meditating well, and the different martial yeah. arts mixed up because they're so intertwined. Yeah, and honestly, like what I'm finding out from it is that it that kind of is like the essence of it. it uh, there's there's so many different things about it. Um, I th- I think Tai Chi is a bit of an Americanized uh, version of the word. Um, but you know, Tai Chi is very much something that is, is practiced and has been developed, but, um, there's also like Qigong, uh, it's, it's just like different meditation practices that have evolved over the hundreds, if not thousands of years. Uh, it all mostly has to do with first and foremost, like awareness of the body. Like it, it is very much like a meditation, but it's, uh, it kind of combines aspects of yoga where like, and I'm, I'm kind of ta- talking like traditional old school yoga where the point was to have certain poses and and get to certain positions to be able to kind of get more in touch and more in tune with your body and then kind of going deeper into that uh, feeling your energy flow in doing the different motions uh in a practiced way um i mean i don't know if you've done any sort of like martial arts or anything but like i did taekwondo uh back in the you know high school day and uh, they had like a, a whole like aspect that was like a third of the time of of lessons was dedicated to one of these aspects which was kind of just like 
a different, not a dance, but like different uh, ordered steps or ordered moves of, of movements and uh, like guards or punches or blocks or what, what have you, uh, you know, and that's, that's from uh, South Korea. So very much in line with that kind of, you know, being awareness of your body and, and practiced movements. It's very much an interesting way to work out. I never, I never took any like karate or tai chi or taekwondo classes. I took one MMA class, and it was the free one <laughs> that they give you when you show up. Yes, and it kicked my butt. And also, it was a half hour drive that my mom wasn't willing to because she was already going to college at the time, <laughs> and I was, I was in high school. Yeah, that's a so, lot. Yeah, so I never went back. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, get, getting your ass kicked like that as a you know in high school. That's that's rough. That's that's not always fun to do. No, you know what? I I I think your oldest son would love stuff like Taekwondo. There's a ton, a ton of like places around where I'm at where there's they do Taekwondo. I I don't I know, I know it's pretty expensive like to, for lessons and stuff, but uh, I've got like I've had a couple of nephews that do it that really appreciate it my youngest would love that i'm sure the oldest would too but the youngest would get the most out of it oh yeah he, he loves running around more than, <laughs> than my oldest the oldest he, he wants to be a, a youtuber and i sierra came out and she's like boys what do you want to be when you grow up and they both looked at <laughs> they both looked at each other we want to be professional gamers. <laughs> Why? Because nice. dad's really good at video games. I'm like, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't, what am I doing? Don't make it my fault, no. <laughs> <laughs> you love it because you love it. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, that's pretty pretty damn cute. Like, you know, I, I mean, if they can do that, if they can make that work, sure, go for it. That's awesome. And there's some, uh, exactly. there's some solid money in professional gaming. You know, they get into that League of Legends stuff. There's like, there's, 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 like tournaments and millions in there. Yes, it, it uh, playing for a team can definitely make you a lot of money. Owning the team is a different story. I was listening to a couple of different uh, streamers and YouTubers that own teams and talk to people that own teams and a lot of the time they operate in the red because how do you how do you make money off of it it's not like <laughs> nfl or nhl or soccer that yeah it's not well known advertising yeah advertising if anything when there's not much exactly Oof. i mean if they, they if that's what they want to do then heck yeah go for it as long as you're a good person and you're and you're working just just, just live your life boys I love it. That's such and, a nice. That's such a good dad thing to say. <laughs> can I use that if I have to say dad things? You sure can. I don't. I don't have any kids. I can say it to my dogs. There you go. Live your life. Um, go to work. Uh, here, De- I'll, pr- I'll practice. Dexter, come here. Dexter, come here. I'm over here. Hi. All right, come here. Sit. Sit. Paul. Okay, I got his hand. Live your life. Okay. Go to work. Oh yeah. Um, his his Be job the is the naps and and the guards. He's a guard guard dog. You know he barks when there's people at the door. So he he does his job. Live your life. Do your job and just be happy, man. There you go. He gave me the the, the happy tongue that he gives me. Like <laughs> like sticks his tongue out a little bit. Like and lips licks like the front lips, like really fast. It's cute. Anyway, that's all you need. That's all you need, buddy. That and I guess me to rub your face. Okay. Oh yes. All right. So, real quick, going back to the martial art, like the the tai chi and the taekwondo, yeah. being freeing and being more aware of your body. Uh, I didn't have that through martial arts. I had that experience through free running, climbing, and parkour. Ooh. I was never really all that good at it, but knowing that like the roads and the streets and the paths weren't the only way I could move around the world opened up a lot of possibilities. And I would just go crazy thinking about, all right, there's a fence. How many different ways can I cross this fence? I love it. I can get on, how can I get up on top of that roof? Suddenly the world's, all these different paths have been opened up 
simply through an interest of parkour and 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 then. Huh. Oh, I, I remember you getting like really again. into parkour. I remember you uh, you were playing Mirror's Edge or something around yeah. that time too. But there was also like <laughs> you just you just were really into it, and like that, that was kind of where like parkour exploded too. You weren't the only one that like that became a real popular like you know YouTube trend. Uh, but I didn't re- I didn't realize you had kind of like an, an eye opening experience with it. That's such a that's such a cool way to look at it. Like yeah, different ways to get around, get different ways to like just be able to move about. I don't know. It's very it's it's very freeing. Uh, I don't know being aware and uh, in control of your body. I was just actually kind of kind of come controlling it or you know or combining into that. I was just going on a walk with Jess today, and she was like saying all day how her shoulder's been off and off and you know whatever. And, and that's like I don't say and whatever. I I say uh, that because it's it, it's a common trend. It's happening like almost like every other month, uh, like almost like clockwork. And I say like clockwork because. Uh, we kind of noticed that it's basically every time there was a cold snap in the past, like, month and a half, two months or so, there's been, like, three or four. Um, And every time there's been one, she's had a shoulder thing, and we think because she's still going outside to get into her car and get into work, and and now she's still commuting, and she hunches up her shoulders when she's out there. I see see her come out from there, and she's, like, literally hunched up and, like, it's it's adorable because she's bundled up in her cute little coat, and she's like, oh, hold me cute, and I get to warm her up and that I always enjoy that. But, um, like she, I kind of like was walking with her and realized that she was cr- scrunching up her shoulders. And I've realized like, I've been doing that myself. I've had to like be aware of that. If my shoulder hurts, I can't just like hold my shoulders up cause it's cold and freaking hurts. So I just being aware of that, I think might ha- even just help her from <laughs> regular shoulder pain that she's been suffering from. Oh man. What, is it the, specifically the cold that triggers it, or is it the repeated action of scrunching up your shoulders because of the cold that triggers it? I guess both. Yeah. It, okay. It's the, 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 well, I mean, yeah, both. Like cold is never good for your muscles. It's just, it's. I mean, it's kind of just like a shock to, to them if if they get too cold too fast, um, which would cause them to, to contract. Uh, based and what's on my, the deal with uh, the ice bath? Uh, that's like after. Um, I think that's like kind of the the point. And I can look at benefits of an ice bath. I, I I know it's it's a healing effect. It's just it's to like, I believe help uh, cool down your body super fast to help move like the lactic acid after getting a big workout. Maybe because that's what it is. It's a big workout. It's a rigorous exercise. Whereas we're just going from the car to the house and mm-hmm. at a brisk pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ice that bath reduces sense. inflammation, and swelling. Uh, Cold temperature narrows your blood vessels, re- uh, relieves sore muscles, aids exercise recovery, lowers core body temp, uh, supports immunity. So I, I've heard that, like, uh, uh, you know, like, taking a morning ice dip, like, people in, in Norway who, like, jump in the water every morning when it's freezing cold. Oh, yeah. That's, like, a, an immunity benefit thing. Um, kind of, like, just, just uh, challenging your immune system is what benefits it in the long run. Uh, so... Yeah, I heard that was also a good. Uh, well, not a. Uh, it was a way to help those suffering from depression, to go out and swim as far as they could into a freezing lake during winter or when it gets colder. I mean, something. It's kind of hard about, to be sad when it's just like fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I have to survive. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't have time to be. Depressed, unless it's really that bad. That I could see that having a a, a possible uh, turn, bad turn. If it's if, oh, if, if it goes the reverse way, time. like all right, I guess this is how I go. Like, wait, wait no, 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 that wasn't. <laughs> no, that it's wasn't supposed to shock you. Back, no, uh, <laughs> no, Eve. Yeah, but no, it's been it's been nice. I actually, I didn't do Tai Chi today. I've been trying to do it like every day, um, but it's been tough to do. Uh, I've been a little bit busier at work, just helping out with a little bit more things, kind of taking a few yeah. more responsibilities, which is, is nice, and it's been a cool challenge. Uh, it hasn't been, like, panic-inducing like previous points in my life, so, hey, progress. That's good. But, uh, That's good. yeah. I'm going on vacation in March. Uh, to, yes, you are. To Hawaii, and uh, uh, now is the time where I'm like, man, I can't wait for it to not be cold. Like, Remember, you can't die. 
No, oh no, no, yeah, yeah, no, we we did talk about that. <laughs> yep, yeah, no one, you don't want anyone else to to die for this year. No, nope. you're. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, one I goal. Agree. Uh, yeah, the the you can totally. Do everything you can for that. I, I will I will support it. And, yeah, no, I was actually, oh, ooh, just to make you feel better, I heard some stats, uh, you know, like just on the radio, and it was, again, confirming, like, chances to die on a plane. It's like uh, 100,000 to 1 or something, and, like, car was, like, 100 to 1 or something like that. So um, you're much likelier to die in your car than I am in, in my plane, or the plane, not my plane. If that makes you feel Well, if I die, it doesn't count because I don't want anyone else to die. No, that that's anyone else, not you. If 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 you die, you're 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 dead. So it doesn't matter. Never mind. Exactly. Anyway, well, that's um. Let's not do that. That's that's <laughs> our perfect morbid joke segue to our topic, <laughs> which I oh, I think man. a bit of morbid. I think morbid humor is humor is literally the is 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 from uh the origin is literally from our topic. So that might, might be a bit of that in in here. Um, and it actually might be a topic of, uh one of the ways in which uh, Native American tribes react to this topic. But our topic is death. Death. Uh, there is a lot of that going around. Yeah. Uh, not Actually, any yeah. specifically, but like just, you know, uh, all, always happening, ever present. Most, most people have died, uh, you know, in general. But um, <laughs> most people throughout their lifetime have died. Yep. Yeah. Um. <laughs> hey, did you did you know that one hundred percent of people who drink water will die? <laughs> so it reminds me of this dad joke oh, where we drive by the cemetery. How many people in there are dead? One, two, three. The kids will sit there. Wait, I can't count all the headstones. We can't stop. Just all of them. Ah, well, you oh, got yeah. me, Dad. Oh. Good job. No, yeah. kids you kids don't place? no, kids don't say good job to their dad when they do dad jokes. No, no, they don't. Kids get angry and want to get out of the car while it's still moving. They stop they start ignoring me or start talking about something else and a little part of my soul dies. And I'm like, "Oh no." Oh, oh wow. And there goes my soul. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. I'm just being dramatic. <laughs> but that is that is our topic today and honestly, maybe we can kind of just start off with that um just the the idea of of morbid humor. Uh, or just humor in general at all, just as a response to death. Uh, we're kind of going to get into a bit of um, the a bit of rituals of the Seneca and 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 what is what is uh, just normally how people uh, mourn and the tribe. But in general, I think almost every culture uh, can relate to using humor in some way to get over death. Um, if even oh, just sure. just like telling the funny stories. Sorry, my cat's That's getting into my laughter bookshelf. Laughter is the best medicine. I've yeah. always been told that. And then it makes me blush a little bit when people tell me that, I just really like your laugh. And I'm like, yes, I'm good medicine. Like, because laughter is good medicine. It's it's, And then when it's morbid humor, at least for me, it makes it, like, even if it's half a percent, it makes it all that much easier to deal with actual people dying, passing away when it comes around uh in, into my into my, into our families uh yeah it just a much lighter path like you can't definitely you're probably when someone passes away you're gonna spend time being sad but then what happened with my family recently when my cousin passed away was you'd think so we had we had uh his body laid out in the living room for a couple days and you'd think like all that time spent around him would be sad i remember that first night we couldn't stop laughing because we just kept telling stories about the good times and then they just kept going and going and going not everybody was laughing like my nana she was pretty broken up but by the second or third night she cracked a smile and i just remember everyone laughing and it was good medicine. The only time people really started crying was when there was no laughter or we were just sitting there or maybe we went outside to listen to a song or talk about stuff we wish we could have said. Um, 
but you like what you said to me when he did pass and i said i wish i could have because one of the last things he asked was to talk to me and ask me how did you get through your addiction um unfortunately at the time because we had not made the appointment 24 hours in advance i couldn't go see him but i wanted to tell him one day at a time and i remember when i told you that you said we'll tell him now because he's listening and so i did mm. and it was weight off the shoulders he will he can take that energy take that phrase that advice with him on his journey now um and what ha whatever happens is between him and creator we we did what we had to do uh i was able to be a pallbearer and so it was very comforting to help and be one of the guys to carry him to his final resting place it was just i got i have your back one last time on this earth and and then there you go uh so it was, it was it was rough but i remember when it when he was actually being lowered down into the grave one of my aunties um had told my mom something about the rain and the rain when it when it, when it's raining out during a funeral uh in our culture seneca, seneca culture that means he's going on a good journey i don't know why i just that's that's what i heard about it I I love that. I didn't hear I I didn't get to, to hear that. Uh, I think I, I I was lucky enough not lucky enough. I was it was I don't know my honor to to help you and be there for you and Sierra for for the most part. That's kind of how I found if if I had a part there that was it. Um, but Dude, I, you I, being there made my mom smile. And yeah. I asked her, why and she said it was so good to see you and tyler walking around side by side as friends for the first time in a long time and it's not like we haven't stopped being <laughs> just friends, like literally but it's in, been a... in the same space <laughs> uh... yeah exactly she hasn't seen us together in a long time and that made her smile that's that's wonderful hey actually uh just i didn't i didn't even think about this uh you know in in talking about um that day, but um, during the, that day, uh, <laughs> while people were, um, uh, but right before we we started the, the the process before moving him to the, the actual site, um, I was able to reconnect with some members of my family that I hadn't talked to in uh, a couple of years, just because of life and <laughs> getting busy and having a job and. Oh, and also, you know, like getting engaged and getting a house and all of it. So, uh, it was, it, it was, uh, almost a kind of a whiplash of just like, okay, sad times. So strong, strong support for, um, I'm here to, I'm here to help people who I love, who, who need, who need love. And all of a sudden, Oh, hi, I haven't seen you. Uh, cause I mean, I, I wasn't even aware that, that, um, Andrew knew other members of my family or, you know, people of, of at least my extended family, um, kind of, again, just sort of shows the oh, connectivity. Oh, yeah, dude. It is a small world. My, uh, Andrew's little sister, my little cousin, Mary, was, is best friends with Alex. That's, that's so crazy. They, yeah. Not like, just cousins. And uh, I, I don't know, I just... Families... That, Stuff yeah, you put together like that. Yeah, stuff you just like don't don't put together. But it was really wonderful in a strange way to to be able to see them again. In I guess that setting was I don't want to say like the perfect time to have see seen family you haven't seen in forever. But I guess in this instance it was. Usually, if you think about if you think about funerals, you think about oh no, I have to see this person who I haven't seen in a while. That's something that's usually tougher to deal with, but. Uh, it was nice to to run to them, uh, but uh, kind of going into that, maybe we'll sort of talk a bit about bit more about the the rituals, uh, specifically the the ones that your your family had didn't had to but went through, um, and if there's any other rituals that you maybe didn't. The only thing I really discovered about. Uh... 
his the way they handled his uh going with his uh, with the rituals or ceremonies was I guess it's really old tradition where if someone in the bird clans passes away people from the animal clans will come over and do everything for the family set up the the funeral make the food stay up with the person because that's I didn't ask why that was either I, I should have but um when the body is laid out in the living room or whatever room you have them laid out in in your house you have to have someone stay up with them throughout the night until the family wakes up and then and then you can go and take your break or yeah just go rest uh we didn't really do that i don't know why it's we were just aren't it wasn't super traditional because andrew wasn't super traditional but sure it, it's it's all kind of just interpreted in your own way and how how you know each family or individual deals with it or deals or is interacting with that experience in the moment it's 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 all supportive and helpful and and quote i mean maybe you're maybe good maybe not to to have this these kind of rituals and have this culture to sort of use as a as a framing for grieving uh but in the end it's still always just going to be you're still going to have kind of an individualized experience with that uh so i mean i i hope you're not like beating yourself up about like oh we we didn't we didn't do it all or we didn't like cuz like from from what i experienced there was a lot going on and there was a lot of love and there was a lot of support and there was a lot of a lot of people like a lot of people who like clearly cared and care for those who are still here in your family i'm definitely not beating myself up about it man um and that's one of the things that I wish he realized, but he probably he realizes now that all those people did care about him. I think he was having trouble finding himself in the world, uh, which is which is common for young men, oh my, for, uh, ages for twenty one to thirty, whatever is finding your place in this world with the, it, it, that just it, it's it's hard. I'm definitely not beating myself up about wishing I could have said more or doing more because I did what I could and I said what I could and whatever his decision with himself and the creator was, that's between them now. I did, I did what I could. I got him to his final resting place. Um, I remember he got angry at me probably about six months ago because when me and him were sharing a room or him and I were sharing a room together at pop's house, I moved out to go and live with Sierra. And he really internalized that as Alec has abandoned me. And I, and I, and I, and I told him, no, I did not abandon you. One, you had a, you have an excellent family here taking care of you to be with you Two. I can't be there for you forever. I have to live my own life. I have to go and experience my things. I can do what I can for you because you're like my, you are my brother. Like not actually my brother, but he's, he, he is my brother. Like you and me are brothers. Yes. Yeah. Um, close to that. But I mean, also, I think, I don't know yeah. if you said it, but there's also an aspect of like, you have responsibility. You've, you've got, you've got kids. Yeah. <laughs> well now, but. Like you were being time, responsible. You were being responsible in in moving out. You were like it was very much a, like a, a, I I from my point of view I saw responsible mom, responsible dad doing what's right by their kids to give them the best shot, and, and I I respected the hell out of that because uh, I yeah. you know I, I don't I just it it shows you're a good dad. Sorry, C- continue. Good I dad. no, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> that actually reminds me of what happened yesterday. Um. So this will this will tie into death. Um, Grayson was my youngest was throwing a huge fit, and we couldn't figure out why. It wasn't because of the TV. It wasn't because it was bedtime. We couldn't figure out why. 
And so Sierra asked him, what is going on with you? And he said, I don't want to talk about it. And so he gave him some space. And mm. when he was ready to talk, he said, I really miss Diesel and Bobo. Mm. Diesel's my dog. Bobo was Sierra's dog. Oh. And they both passed away last year. And eventually it, he came out and told us and he started crying. So I picked him up and I started crying too. Me and him just sat there holding each other crying for a good five, 10 minutes. And so then I just talked to him about how she was in pain and he, he doesn't, he doesn't, he said, I don't understand why she can't be here with mm. us on real world and in the, in on earth rather than wow. in sky world. Oh my God. I mean, he's, he's again, he's four, right? He's five. He's five. five. He's okay. not going to understand that. Well, that's so still, just... that's still pretty good. Like, I don't think I had that if I've. No, I would definitely wouldn't have figured it out. I would have been, I would have been sad like he was. So I told him, I gave, I told him stories about how Diesel was my dog for this long, and she kept me company this long, and she helped pop out this long, and now she, when she was in pain, she knew it was her time to go, and he just kind of like sat there and nodded, um, and so I picked up this little ceramic disc that the vet gave me, uh, it had a imprint of Diesel's paw. Mm. And so I gave that to him and said, if you ever need or are ever feeling sad, here's a little piece of Diesel to carry with you. Oh, that's and I, I was going to keep it, but I, I, like in that moment, he needed it. He needs it more than I do. Yeah. I had my time with Diesel, and he, he wishes he could have had more time. Oh, but he's man. young yet, so... So Dude, you're that... gonna break me, man. That that's beautiful. <laughs> <sighs> I did a good you thing you yesterday. Can't, you can't blindside me with that kind of shit, man. That's beautiful. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of death, actually, this is is a weird kind of t- tie-in. I guess I don't uh, I don't know if you've heard or seen or anything how um, the the TV show The Last of Us has been uh... has been out. I didn't even know it was out. I knew there would be it was being made, but I didn't uh, watch it. Three episodes are out. The third episode just came out. It's an hour and a half, uh, and it works perfectly as a standalone love story, starring Nick Offerman from like Parks and Rec. Love like, story and like uh, y- yes, a, lo- a gay love story, a queer love story, and it's fucking beautiful. And it made me and just sob, not sob, but like cry multiple times with Aww. just how perfectly represented it was of just like living a life together. Cause it had multiple time jumps of like four years later, seven years later, 10 years later, as it just goes through this, these two men's lives living in the world after the, when the world, world after the world ends, just, ah, uh, just so many perfect beautiful lines of just summing up ways that I've felt about Jess and things I've worried about and just uh, things about getting older and, th- and, and the ever approaching concept of death. It, it just, it's, I'm still like, kind of reeling from it just cause it was like, man, that was just whew, very nice. It's going to um, get you. That's coming yeah, for us all. It, it, it is, but it's, it's what, in, in my opinion, it's what um, gives all meaning to everything that in in life that, that we experience in, in, the, in the way that we experience life. Death is what provides the, I don't know, backdrop to actually give anything meaning. Like, there's so many, like, sci-fi stories and whatever anime or whatever things where people like this person can't die and he's jaded and hates existence or, or whatever. Like that's, that's been explored so much, but it, it's honestly true. Like there, people would be oh, miserable if, if, they got, exactly. if they got old enough. If I couldn't die, uh, you know how many years I'd waste just doing nothing at all? Yeah. I'd like, I wouldn't have a timeline. I wouldn't have a, uh, a goal to work towards. Yeah, I don't think anything yeah. would ever get done. I mean, I no. don't, it's very, <laughs> no. it'd be a very different reality that we live in. But, um, yeah, that uh, 
<sighs> man, you got me. No, and then I started thinking about that damn episode again. I've had I've had to like stop what I was doing and just like take a deep breath. Like, ah, damn you, Nick Offerman. <laughs> got me again. Anyway, uh, back to the different rituals. So you kind of talked about it a bit, but I, I, I was appreci- I mean, again, it's hard to say I appreciated this experience because it was the, the tragic loss of a loved family member. Uh, so yeah. weird, but it, it was, it was, uh, an experience that I still value. Uh, and you know, in having it, I, I, was able to learn a bit more about the culture of, of one of my closest friends, which I do see as a good thing, and that I try to take a silver lining and everything, and that hopefully can be one of them. Uh, but the you know to start at least from where I came in, uh, I learned that you were in like the day before or a couple days before, uh, and that you were just going to have to stay up with the body, like you had mentioned, or at least somebody was going to stay up with the body. Uh, and that uh, that was going to be for like twenty four hours at least. Yes, uh, we did it for two days because I think it's because the funeral was on a Sunday. Mm. Yeah, it was on a Sunday because I the my dad was watching the kids until Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't. Ex- I it might tie into the other beliefs that I do know that are um, when this, when, when they're laid out and they're at the house, you are not supposed to go outside by yourself, like ever. Um, Because if you go outside by yourself, there's a chance that the person who is getting ready to go on their journey will want to take you with them. Or, whenever you're laying the body out you have to have all it's like with phones today it's kind of impossible to have every single reflective surface uh covered up but the majority of them like mirrors uh hang paintings or photos uh windows because if you see your reflection there's a chance that you could see his reflection or her reflection um and they will attach themselves to you in a bad way. You'll you'll notice bad luck, illness, uh, tragedy, to, just things like that. So it could tie into that, or maybe it was something about he'll wander off if nobody's up with him, or he'll get something you need someone to that. as an anchor, like a spiritual anchor of some sort. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I love that. That's, the... that's a pretty cool concept of that. That's that, that's in a couple of different cultures. Um, one thing I was mm-hmm. sorry. No, no, please. One one thing I was lucky to do, um, was every time. So while the body is laid out in the living room, you are supposed to every time you have food, make a plate for the the, the person. You have like a TV stand right by their casket and you make a plate for them and you serve them first and then you get yours. And that very last night, right before Saturday night, it was time for his quote unquote last dinner. And so Alyssa, a little sister out of nowhere, starts making ramen. (sighs) And Nana comes in and says, you're not supposed to put the seasoning with it. And she says, okay, and puts a little bit in a cup. And I said, can I have the rest? And I got to share one last bowl of ramen with my oh. brother, with, with my brother. And that, that meant a lot because we used to eat a lot of freaking ramen. Yeah. And that's, that's where the healing and the laughing comes in from small little things like that. A bowl of ramen that someone at millions of people eat around the world. It, it meant the world at the time, and and let's let's be absolutely clear: the freeze dried, n- non authentic crap, like yes. ninety nine cents a pack at the convenience store when it's five cents to create pack, like instant noodle, instant noodle. Yes, the good, the good, good. That's right. Yeah, I, we I, had I, that for dinner. It, that's that's so many like childhood memories of just. Instant ramen, either on the stovetop or like at camp, in the in, oh, yeah. the in the foam cup that definitely has carcinogens like 
like built into it. Anyway, that's that's one way we're getting closer to death. Ramen. Uh, yep. So the covering of the windows and the just the entire the concept of just the, the various ways in which you acknowledge that the spirit is still with you is still uh, or still like kind of I don't know, I don't want to say use put words in but like tethered to the the I don't know the attachments that were created either emotional or just even the physical stuff or um, all that and um, that uh, kind of even went further into the the next parts of, of the actual the day of the funeral. Uh, you know, everyone arrived and everyone was still within that silent moment and there was plenty of, of, of tears shed and, um, and, and hugs and uh, very, very uh, American stereotypical funeral uh, moments. Uh, but there was also a couple of very nice, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not even readings, but... Um, recitations or just like I don't know what the the I don't know who the gentleman was uh, I think he was uh, some officiant of the tribe in some capacity it might have even just been an uncle oh, for all I know oh the speaker the speaker yes thank you yes no he was not related to us in any way he's just that goes remember the tribe he's there to talk to Andrew and to tell him you are going like basically you are going on this journey now you do not need anything else the material things that you had in this world you will not you you have no need for them anymore these the your family are ready to push you towards your journey you do not need to attach yourself to them and then so on and so forth about what going on this journey is going to be for andrew and he was very he was like talking to us but he was also talking to Andrew, like his, his yes. body and his, his spirit. Yes. Um, yeah. Es- essentially, just you're you're getting ready to go on this journey, and then I don't really remember the rest because it was I. Ca- <laughs> I remember my mom and my aunt saying this when af- af- that night after we buried him and went back to the house. They said I forgot how long that speech was. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> I actually like the, what I wanted to say about it was that the, the the memorable part of it for me was it was very elegant like it it was it was very very well uh spoken and the language is a beautiful one uh especially kind of used in such a a beautiful and meaningful way um and also just very well presented cuz you know like the dude kind of understood the audience that there was a couple of non-language speakers there uh and he gave a very good um english description as to as to you know what was going down and i i appreciated that um but it was yeah so in 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 the house he had a couple of you know different long lines to say um but then it was uh everybody out of the house or everyone get out, or, or except for family, like direct family. That was definitely more of a typical funeral thing. That wasn't um, a Seneca thing. That was everybody except the. So, actually, no. It. I, I don't want to say for certain, but the fact that the men go and they pass by the casket first okay and and see it one last time then yes. the women go okay and then the, the pallbearers stay behind and everyone else leaves and then we transport him yes. into, to the hearse and then i get in the car and my uncle the one you met matthew or my cousin oh my god he yeah. couldn't stop making me laugh we're on our way <sighs> to go and help him but bury our cousin yet i could not stop laugh crying on the way there and i said eh, matthew you gotta stop it yeah, why you look because like a bastard. this is a serious thing and he's like come <laughs> oh, on he can't no. be so serious all the time and i'm like you know what this, this is the time, time to be serious <laughs> <laughs> like um, yeah, sorry, i get serious. i get it though like <laughs> did he did he do anything specific i don't know, like rip a fart no he's just making jokes oh, yeah, about yeah. Or memories about powwows, about stuff that we've been through, and Being together. <laughs> every time the me good and medicine. Matthew get together, 
Brezen, what's good? Because everybody, my mom used to always say that I looked like him because my long <laughs> when I had my long hair, and oh, so we're, we're yeah. Brezen. And every time we get together, we just do stupid stuff like try to chop a log with a shovel. Andrew was there for that one. <laughs> <laughs> we dragged a tree across the road to start a fire, but we needed to chop it. We didn't have an axe, but we had a shovel. It didn't work. <laughs> we sat there we, we learned that day. <laughs> Shovel doesn't chop. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless it's like one of the military ones. That's, That's uh, what I thought would happen. <laughs> but that was uh, okay. So again, you get the you get the blend there of of the different kind of uh, cultures. But I did appreciate that kind of. Um, no, it was if anything, it was just a cool detail of just like men first go through and everyone get one last chance. Cause, uh, cause in most funerals I've been to, it's just like, all right, if you want to, you can go and address the person if, if you wish, but it's not kind of like exactly part of, you know, of every single, uh, ritual I've been a part of. Uh, but it was, it was, uh, I mean, I didn't know Andrew, but I, I did try to send a good vibe his way, uh, love and compassion. You know. That's all you need, man. That's all you need. Um, and then after the, I mean, it was kind of a bit of a circuit cause it was, it was just like a big line of people just constantly going through your mom's house. Uh, oh, yeah. like for a good, like 20 minutes while the people who were in front were freezing <laughs> in the backyard. Uh, but then we all got in our cars and uh, drove down the funeral, and um, I formed one of the hardest memories I am, I, th- I think I've ever had so far, and that's watching a mother bury her son. Um, I I hope I I hope I don't have to see that uh, again. That was that was that's that was rough. That was uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I am getting ahead of myself just because. Uh, there was also another another reading another another um, uh, I'm sorry. The speaker had more words to say, and uh, again, very well said, very well uh, spoken and presented. Uh, the, the the again the rain, like you said, the rain came in. Like honestly, picture perfect, fu- like movie perfect funeral as far as as funerals go, like. It w- it was a good an- uh, day to to say goodbye to Andrew. I think with the weather kind of helped him along. I like I like it to was think. perfect. Um, I remember my focus at that point was just uh, being trying to be there for you, like. Uh, just... Sometimes it's hard just to witness stuff, you know, and funerals kind of force us to to do that, like yeah, at least at certain parts. But you know what else? Funerals bring people together. It's weird. Death brings people together. Uh, it reminds us too. My my other friend Tyler, not you, Tyler. Ugh. Other Tyler. Remember other it's Tyler? So confusing. Yeah. No. I, I no. I remember Tyler. We talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, a couple days ago, uh, his grandfather passed away. Oh. And so I asked him, were you guys close? What were some of the happiest memories you guys have? And he said that one of his favorite memories was the way his grandfather would cook eggs because he was able to make it and there was a crispy ring around the outside. (laughs) And he said no matter what, he could never perfect it the way his grandpa could. (laughs) And at the end, he typed, I wish I could have asked him how he did it which brought me back to what you said. And I was listening to something the other day that co- uh, correlated or coincided with what was happening. And it rings true. Death brings people together. Take the time that you have now with the older people in your family. Just call them, say hi. And you won't. you might not get every single story you want to get, but you'll make most of the time that you have with that person. You might get the same story every time. You might get the same story every time. Exactly. <laughs> you also might get that with, with me because sometimes I'm a stoner. So it, sometimes. It depends. 
Okay, I'm a stoner. I'll, I'll own I love it. You. Fine. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's anti-inflammatory. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sleeping medication. <laughs> Oy vey. No, no, I'm a stoner. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, trying to think if there's if there's anything else. It was. Um, Oh yeah, like the probably the one of the most important aspects of it afterwards was the the reception. It was it was a it was a beautiful reception. There was a lot of uh, just people together in a in the the very nice uh, uh, Seneca Nation uh, co- community center center center. Oh, the was. fire hall. Fire hall, <laughs> a, a community center. You know, um, but the I fire hall. They got the big bingo board in there. <laughs> That's where it's at. I was like, "Oh my God, they upgraded from the Legion now they're at the fire hall." But there was <laughs> an absolute ton of food, uh, and a lot of people there eating together and laughing and telling stories. And I, you know, I, I just I was there before other people just because, like, oh, it's freezing, and you know, they're doing like closer family. Everyone else is sort of trickling off, so I'm I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna I can, I can go help set up. I can I can I can move stuff. I can I can move and and not be sad. Um, but I move tables around and, you know, we spread them out like cafeteria style at, at, in, in a high school. <laughs> and then as soon as people actually get there, like, wait, what are we, like, why are we so spread out? And everyone pushed tables together <laughs> and made one giant table and was just sitting around and it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that makes, that makes more sense. <laughs> and <laughs> just telling stories. Uh, I had my first fry bed, fry bread. <gasps> that was your first? Yes. I've never had fry oh, bread before. A... Silver Can lining. Just make your heart pump. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was definitely good stuff. There, there was a, a cousin or uncle of yours that was there who was like definitely more excited for fry bread than I was, and I was like, you know, you've been talking about it forever, and it was it's good stuff. Uh, but he was definitely more excited. <laughs> it might have been Matthew or Uncle Steve. Or I think it might have been Uncle Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it was fry it was great to talk good. to people. Um, I, I, your mom like was immediately like, make sure you take food with you. Make sure you don't take take a plate. And oh, and uh, the the other you know last aspect of the uh, the ritual aspect of there was that the last there was a plate there for Andrew in that uh, yes. in that last reception. Uh, yes. So that was a kind of a nice way to wrap it up, uh, or at least um, in in my experience, you know, uh, I I think there was a couple of other things that had to happen. Uh, you, you, I think you described it. Was was there wasn't there like a ten day process like before we even got to like the funeral and and the and the um, viewing the body? Wasn't there like stuff happening beforehand? There's uh something called the ten day feast, where from the um where. From the day that he passes, after 10 days had has passed, I think it's the close family has a feast. And then a part of him or helping Andrew let go of his material objects and make uh, like he then he'll realize he doesn't need to take people with him or objects with him or attach himself to those objects is you give his stuff oh it sounds really weird and i guess it would sound kind of strange and well, bad but you give no, not, not you really give the, his but, stuff out. oh i mean like to just like any like like giving away his like his will like his last will and testament sort of thing right yeah if he has anything well, like, like that or is it just like no no one gets a will all their stuff just gets up handed handed out randomly if they had a will i'm sure that's if Done that's first. the route that was being taken then yeah but this was more um the uh, a seneca tradition about you hand away his material objects and you you want someone who's actually gonna use that object or not just sell it or put yeah. it off to, and you hand you give them out oh. and i actually found some has... research about this did you? Uh, yeah, there, I, I found a couple of websites. We we had <laughs> talked plenty about stuff, but uh, uh, where uh, t- 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 ten day feast comparable to the white man's reading of the last will and testament. So that's honestly where probably where my my thought come uh, come uh, came to that it takes place ten days after the date of the funeral, uh, when there is a death in one Moetly M O I E T Y. 
uh, all the clans included in that motley are considered in mourning, uh, and the opposite. Oh, I'm sorry, my moiety moiety m o i e t y uh, provide the help f- uh, for all the work, running errands, etc. Whatever is necessary to be accomplished from the time of death until the completion of the rite of the ten day feast. Um, at the at the feast, the will of the deceased is carried out. The family can retain real property, valuable jewelry, uh, and furniture, but most of the clothing and whatever of the family of, and whatever the family of the deceased wish to give away is distributed to the workers of the opposite. I'm gonna pronounce it wrong again. Moiti, and close family, or and close friends. I'm not sure what the opposite Moiti would be. Maybe that's the clan member from the animal. Uh, oh, uh, or, da, da, or birds because killdeer. I don't know. Uh, what the so a little earlier in this uh, in this web uh, in this uh, research, the Senecas are a matriarchy. So the eight clans. Uh, so I think uh, it's just ma- like a matriarchy term for clan. In the first, moiti are the wolf, turtle, bear, and beaver. Second are the heron, snipe, hawk, and deer. So at one time those those were forbidden, forbidden, or at least what, that's what this is saying. Okay. Uh, which again is in line with uh, what you've explained about how if you know if other people of the other parts of the clan would come in to, to help out to support the uh, the family to provide the food, um, and honestly, what I've seen there's been pl- there were plenty of people that came out to support and there was plenty of food there uh, for oh, gotcha. the, for that time for all that time. Um, but was yeah, that good. was. Well, I'm glad you were were there for that, man. That was. I'm glad you experienced. I'm glad you were there for us for that. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I was. It was. It was my journey. privilege to be there with you. I. I would not want to be anywhere else. No, you're welcome. I think is what you say. I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> that, no, thank thank you for having me. Like I'm glad I'm glad my presence could have been a help. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be there if if I if you know if my presence would have would have caused any sort of whatever issues or anything. Not that that's no, that was in question, good. but uh, no, it's all good. You remember when you were saying that or when we were talking about how humor can be dark and it helps you through through death? Oh yeah. Uh, I said something like. When we were me and Sierra were driving to Nana's house to do to the very first night, uh, <laughs> I was like, "So this is gonna sound kind of bad." And she's like, "What?" And I said, "So who gets Andrew's Xbox?" No. And she's like, oh, "Alec." I'm like, "What?" It's a joke, but really, who gets his Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want it. Those microchips are still expensive, man. They're not. They're not on the market. <laughs> it's got the next gen system. <laughs> I've got the internet. It's, a, it's I mean, a done deal. So honestly, yeah, like the, what we were talking about with that, with that kind of distribution of, of, of like, like stuff like that. Like, um, I, I like how that kind of ties back to the, to the kind of, uh, culture of just the tribe always working together. When, if, if like somebody died and he had like the really good hunting knife, like you wouldn't just bury that. Like, all right, maybe if there's like a, like a spiritual requirement or like, or some spiritual, um, you know, connection that that someone wants to be buried with their knife or something like that. But like, it makes more sense. Like, someone take the knife, use the knife. Like, it's a tool. Yeah. It needs to be used. Like, I don't need it. I'm dead. Yeah, exactly. And just like the idea of of clan working together, community working together, that makes sense to me. There's there's a lot of uh, aspects of our yes, awesome capitalistic society. It's, it does a lot for us, but there's also a lot of stuff of like how generational wealth has caused disparities between... Or disparages? Disparities? Disparity? Dispar- thank you. My gosh. Disparity Wait, between... I don't know what I was saying. I'm sorry. Disparity between just not just people, but groups of people um, that, you know, that kind of concept of just... You don't need it all, especially if you literally don't need it. Give it away. Find find a place for the things that that can be used and do good in the world. Yeah, I think that's something that we can uh, try to learn from. Someday my kids will get my guitar. No, it's, no someday someday your kids will get that Xbox. 
They'll get they'll get Andrew's Xbox. I didn't get the Xbox. So oh. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. If I don't get the Xbox, can I have his guitar amp? Oh my god, that's oh my so god. bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 healing. It's a healing it amp. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I play it, I feel good. No, I mean, hey, and he, like music is absolutely a, a, an important part of healing and. Uh, actually, that was one of the other things that I had talked to you about. Uh, the 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 gorillas had just had a new song come out called uh, "Skinny Ape," and I was that song just like was I was listening to it because it was a new song coming out, so I just wanted to hear it a couple of times. And that was just around the 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 time right either before the funeral or after you had told me that Andrew had died. You know, but in in that you know, that space of time, and like I had like a moment of just like, oh wow, this I don't know why this song is making me think about Andrew, but it kind of is, and and I brought it yeah. up with you when we were listening to it in the car with a couple of your cousins, and they're like, "No, oh no, this this line is it's actually kind of like him." This is like and they, we're all jamming to a quick little song and talking about Andrew and heck yeah, we got just, that car bumping. <laughs> yeah, we did. That's definitely <laughs> that was that was a that was a nice moment. Oh, that was great. I uh, did you what? find any other research? I. There was other stuff. There's I, I will include a couple of uh, of you know links of, of things. I'd actually found a very nice PowerPoint, which was a uh, an, a continuing education program for an end of life care facility, uh, which okay. just kind of like it had a bunch of different uh, Native American cultures uh, uh, response to death, and uh, and Seneca was included in that. So it was, uh, it was, it was a lot of what we talked about, of, uh, even previously about just the, the spirit, how the soul goes to Sky World, how, um, you know, they have a destiny to follow. It's their journey. Um, that things we talked like that, but there's also like other uh, cultures. Um, I think there was one where like they they put the body out in like on a mountainside and let like vultures eat it it's like giving it to the sky sort of situation like there's all sorts of very interesting different ways in which people have uh as as groups created rituals for dealing with death so i'll I'll include a couple of those links uh because there's just so much different stuff maybe this is another topic we can we can get back to yeah oh this is what yeah it was the the suit tribe uh there's what it was they uh, uh, uh Oh, sorry, Earth Burial. Tree Burial. Um, the Sioux, I, I might pronounce it again, Uti, U-T-E, and Navajo tribes used platforms like a scaffold or tree to bring the deceased closer to the sky. Animals consumed the body, bringing the life cycle, uh, life cycle full circle, similar to a Tibetan sky burial. That's what it was. I'd heard about the Tibetan sky burial on, like, an episode of, like, Bones or something like that, too, and that's... Whoa. Yeah. Uh, there's there's also uh, cremation. Uh, burning the deceased helps them enter the afterlife. The the smoke sends the body upward on their journey. This was custom in many tribes, including the Udwa, uh, mortuary pole. This is an uncommon type of totem pole, sometimes used by the... Oof, I, I apologize. Uh, Haida, H-A-I-D-A, and Tlingit, T-L-I-N-G-I-T, Tlingit. I like, I like that one. That, one. that one rolls off the tongue nice. Uh, for important members of tribe of the tribe, I'm assuming t- uh, to keep the ashes of tribe members after cremation, the ashes or body of the person who has died is placed within the pole, making a very prominent memorial. Uh, and then there was uh, earth burial, very very pop, very just honestly like uh, almost a certain like biological uh, uh, reptilian brain part of our body, just like oh if it's if something is dead. It should go back to the earth, and I, I, I've, I've loved noticing how multiple cultures sort of have that. Uh, but the Sioux Native Americans often choose this burial option. They view the earth as our mother, and I agree. And when a family member dies, a dirt burial is the best way to reconnect with the planet and free the soul. So I will include that one as well. That was a bunch. There's a lot, of, a lot of interesting ways to to view death, and. Uh, Whoa. What? I said, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing it all in my head. 
And what else? Let me see. Anything else? Just to talk about real quickly. Uh, I had found... Um, so, uh, last thing, last bit of research, The and I won't get too much into it just because it's a fairly uh, lengthy story, or lengthy written-out story, um, but kind of wrapping into how we've talked about how uh, Native American cultures are oral traditions or um, are, are uh, not don't have many written-down traditions from, from farther back history because they were all orally pla- passed down. Uh, but there was a... Uh, b- 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 accessgenealogy.com had a story of a Seneca ceremony from 1731. Uh, it was not exactly a traditional like death and burial. It was actually a, 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 a husband or like a, a a a visit uh, an, an Algonquin husband murdered his wife during a visit in in the, the Seneca area, uh, but yeah. also visiting was like a French trapper who like was there during all of this and then witnessed all this and then wrote a journal and that's what survived and that's how we have the story. Um, oh. Yeah, so the the woman was killed by her husband, and he was in turn executed by the Seneca, and the double funeral was followed, was described by the French traveler. Um, there, uh, there was a structure where the bodies were kept for several days after death and prepared for burial, uh, duh, 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 and when he arrived, the, the, the French, uh, you know, trapper or trader, uh, traveler was uh, when he arrived. The cabin was already crowded with men and women, all seated or rather squatting on their knees, with the exception of four women, uh, who were laying, uh, who were laying face downwards at the feet of the dead woman. They were the chief mourners. Uh, the body of the woman was placed on an elevated stage, dressed in blue and white garments, and a wampum w a m p u m belt. Wampum belt was the only ornament. The face was painted with vermilion on the lips. And in her right hand was placed a garden implement. Uh, this is a quote to denote that during her life she had been a good worker. And in the left hand rested uh, quote the end of rope, the end of a rope, uh, the other end of which floating in a large bark dish indicated the sad fate which brought her end, uh, brought her end, brought her life to an end. Uh, oh. This refers to her having been drowned. Uh, which I had actually missed that in initially reading that. That's that's I. That's an interesting um, aspect in which to to have in that ritual, but I, I, I it's it's poignant. It's a. Uh, it's like there's personalized items to a certain depending extent. on how the the person passed. Yeah, or and 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 how they lived, or at least yeah. as much as they can understand, which is yeah. very personable. Uh, the body of her husband, who had been executed by the Seneca, was at the opposite end of the cabin, uh, but in a most humiliating posture, for he had been stretched at length on his blanket, face downwards with his hands joined over his head, as if to bear witness to the despair or to the repentance which he would have felt for his crime had he been alive. His body in... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Hello. Right. Back to it. His body and face were painted with black and white, and he was partially covered with rags, suspended from a pole placed from but uh, placed for the purpose between his legs were his gun, his hatchet, his knife, his pouch of tobacco, and all of his belongings. Uh, I'm sorry. Suspended from a pole placed for the purpose between his legs. So they, they stuck a pole in the ground between his legs and ha- okay. hung his pouch with all of his stuff, uh, which... I guess nobody wanted, uh, which honestly, no one's going to want the stuff of a, mur- of a murderer. Probably, uh, the Not interior. Back again. <laughs> the interior of the cabin was crowded, uh, and as many more were grouped about outside, and now the mistress of ceremonies began to chant her doleful, doleful lamentations, which is actually very, very uh, good words for describing what your, the speaker at Andrew's funeral sounded like: doleful lamentations. Uh, she related how the two had met their deaths, and scarcely had she made the first movement, mo- uh, movement weeping alone, when the four other women uh, who the traveler mentioned arose and responded regularly to her cadence. Uh, that is to say, they made their lamentations in turn, with the same intonation as the leader, with uh, whose every gesture they imitated. 
Uh, these women tore their hair, joined their hands towards heaven, and poured forth in a plaintive, plaintive tone towards... Ugh, sorry. In a pl- uh, plaintive tone, a torrent of words suitable to the person whose part they represented according... Boy, they according to the different degrees of relationships or connection which this same person bore the deceased man or woman. That is a lot of very specific words. They got very, sure very mournful. Uh, the chanting continued for nearly half an hour when an Algonquin, who was of no relation to the dead woman, imposed silence, rising, and instantly no more limitations were heard. Uh, there was a funeral or- oration for the unfortunate woman, and uh, to make it understood that she must be happy in the land of departed souls and that her relatives should be cons- uh, consoled for her loss. And it goes on a lot longer about how the in, uh, in depth of the actual, you know, the entire, the entire procedure and how they're, uh, they were buried in the cemetery. Uh, but the, right. the general, um, tone of the women being respected or, or being mourned and the man kind of just sort of, yeah, all right, we got to bury this guy cause he's dead, but you know, he's, he, he murdered. That's pretty messed up. Um, but he was buried. Well, you know, there's still a person that still need to be buried. Even- yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of glad these days that we don't just immediately kill, uh, the people, but, you know. I am too. Uh, I gotta live with it for a little bit. Then we'll do it. I mean, no, yeah. Just... No, well, no. <laughs> no. All right. No. <laughs> Fine. But, but yeah, there's there's kidding. a lot to there's a lot to be to be said about death and, and the various rituals rituals that we have. Um, but yeah. you know, uh, most most of those rituals I feel are are for the living. Uh, yes. To help them kind of move on. Um, and move and on in a way that a healthy feels way. like we're not leaving anyone behind. Yeah. That's that's how, that's how I felt listening to the speaker at Andrew's funeral. Is I am not leaving you behind. You have this journey that you have to take. I will be okay. You will be okay. Amen. <laughs> I mean, no, exactly. Yeah, that, that's that's exactly it. I agree, and uh, and I think with that, we're gonna wrap up our episode there. Hold is there on. anything else? Is there anything else that you wanted to share, or anything else that you yes. felt that you wanted to talk about? Yes, that we won't I wanted to share there. a story. Go ahead. Of growth, patience, and parenthood. So one of my assignments for my psychology class, psychology of self-growth, they gave us an assignment called the GLAD exercise. I'm not sure if you've heard of this. Um, It's four questions. Number one, the G, gratitude. Name one thing you are grateful for today. L, learning. Name one thing you learned today. A, accomplishment. Name an accomplishment you name one of your accomplishments today and d is delight write down something that you took delight in and so for mine i wrote for gratitude today i am grateful for another day alive to spend with my two sons Bentley and grayson about four years ago i would not have been able to say the same At the time, my aspirations and priorities were heavily influenced by finding the next high. Learning. I got silly with it. I learned how to build a house in the video game Minecraft. (laughs) My stepson, Bentley, taught me how. Accomplishment. My son, Grayson, helped me out with this one. When he returned home from first grade, I had asked him to clean up some of his room. In return, he could play his favorite game, Minecraft. Within seconds, he was throwing a fit. A year ago, I would have responded with yelling and impatience. This time, I gave him the space to feel his feelings, take a second to calm down, and then talk with him instead of demand. The situation ended with understanding. Minecraft was enjoyed. Nobody yelled. 
I accomplished a little more patience with my son. It's true. You really don't have to yell at your children. <laughs> and for delay, I wrote down, learning how to build a Minecraft house in Minecraft is fun. More so because I let my sons take the wheel and teach me something about the world. I think they enjoyed sharing one of their favorite things with their dad as well. And that's 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 one of my assignments. And that's what I wrote down. Man, that's that. Those are wise words. Thanks for sharing that, man. You're welcome. I I, 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 I might try to others. I might try to do that. Not the Minecraft the, thing, with, but the Glad method. With the dogs? No. <laughs> All no. the Glad technique. Yeah. The, uh, that's... <laughs> All right, Ryder. Today we're playing Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> that that'll be us. Yeah, we'll have a Let's Play stream. Here, <laughs> Talking you teach to me. Minecraft ways. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to share that story because it made me feel good today. That's a good one. I like it. I, hey, I think everyone should try to uh, try to feel glad every single day. If uh, if, yes. if everyone did that, I I think there would be a lot less yelling, uh, and and other negative negativity in the world. There's a lot more yelling than I think there needs to be. To quote one of my favorite garbage bag slogans, "Don't get mad, get glad." Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so, so we are actually going to be seeing each other the, this next week and we're going to a bandits game so we will yes. uh maybe next episode we talk a little bit about lacrosse oh there we go because that's a uh that is that is a direct uh direct inspiration uh or sla uh, slash uh it's a it's a it's an actual cultural uh, st uh part of native america that is that is a still alive and active and, and freaking fun as hell. I love, I love the bandits games. Those are so much fun. They're fun. It's a smaller franchise than say the bills or the sabers, but they're way more fun to go to. It's, it's crazy. And the, the, there's, there's just so enough, so, uh, enough dedicated fans to where they can have a, a full arena and have a hell of a time. Uh, but I really can't wait. We're going to actually go with your mom too. So, uh, we'll have a we'll have a good time with that, and we find ourselves our next topic. Uh, but Heck yeah, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to see either, man. Other than that, thank you all for listening. I hope you had a, a good time, and let us know if you have any questions or comments on death. Fun topic, yes. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the word death. But anyway, <laughs> good night, everybody. What what do, what do you say, Al? Uh, now I, uh, everyone. <laughs> yes, we did it. We're so good at this. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Talking Two Ways podcast. Al and I really appreciate your time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in a review on whatever platform you found us on. Any review would be a major talking point and we would really appreciate it. If you have tattoos and are into quality aftercare products, check out Lucky 13 Tattoo Aftercare. They make natural balms and cleansers that are cruelty-free, vegan, and really make colors and blacks stand out in the best way possible. If you want to see for yourself, check out protectyourink.com and use the discount code TALLNESS300 for 25% off everything on the site. Thanks for listening.